How's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course series. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with buttons. We'll be doing a couple of use cases and running through the documentation for Mantine buttons and by the end of this tutorial you'll have a pretty good understanding of how to work with them and how to implement them into your own application. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I've opened up the Mantine documentation for button. The link to this is in the description below and the first thing you might notice is that we have three tabs here. One is for the documentation, one is for component props, and the other one is for styles API. All right, so if we go into our component props, we'll see that out of the box, we have a whole bunch of stuff available to us, a whole bunch of props available to us. We have our name, the default value, the type, as well as the description for each of the individual props. And right next to there, we have our styles API. This is something we're not gonna really tackle in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go back into my documentation and let's go ahead and talk about what most of these things mean. And let's go ahead and implement a few use cases inside of our project. All right, so the first thing that we have here is the usage. This is really useful if we want to create a simple button without having to manually build it out of CSS, refresh the page over and over again. And the first thing that we have right here is the variant. The variant is just the different type of variant that you want for the button. So we have a couple of options. One of them isn't available here, but we'll actually implement that into our own app. First one that we have here is called filled. Filled is just what the button is. It's just a button that's filled. Next one is light. So it's like filled, but it's just lighter. Next one, outline. It's just an outline of the button without anything inside of it besides the text. Next one is just the default button. So it has no coloration. You can't make a different color. It's just a default button. Last one is subtle. So initially it looks like text, but if you hover over it, you'll see the button that does have different coloration to it. Next thing that we can talk about is the color. These colors are coming directly from the open color library right here. So we have all these available to us right here. Next thing is radius. So let me go ahead and change it to back to filled. So initially we have extra small radius. So you can't really tell there's any radius all the way up to extra large radius. We have sizes, so extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. We can disable the button if we wanted. We can make it compact. We can have it to be uppercase or lowercase, and we can actually affect the string inside of it. So if we wanted hello world inside of the button, we can have that as well. And right below that, we can actually see our button code implemented right here. So we can just go ahead and copy this into our app if we wanted. Right below everything underneath the actual usage, we have our variants, and just goes into a little bit more detail about how to work with that. And this is the variant that's not available inside of the usage. It's a gradient variant, and this is something I've never seen before in any library, and I think it's really cool. Um, you have the option to have a gradient button, which initially was very difficult for me to implement just with regular CSS or style components. So this is what we're going to be actually implementing into our app. Below that, we have our white variant. White variant is a variant in which button background color is always white, both in light and dark theme, and the color is controlled by the color prop. After that, we have the loading state. This is really useful. Um, this is in most libraries like Material UI and Design where you have a loading state for your button. So if we were to enable it, we can see that the button is loading and is disabled. We can have it positioned either left or right. Next thing, we have our own customization if we want for the button. Um, we have a whole bunch of options that we can give it. The main ones that we can go with is the styles with the theme provider. And we can just go ahead and edit the root the hover, left icon, whatever you want inside of the button. We can provide a component tag as well. So if you want the button to, instead of being a button, we can have it just be an anchor tag. We can have it to go to a separate tab as well. We can give it the href that we want to actually redirect to. So this would go to the Mantine dev Twitter page. Below that, we have the size and radius for the button. Next thing, compact. So like we saw in the beginning of the video, we can have our buttons be really, really skinny in uh, height. Next one is the full width and overflow. So if you want the, the button to be full width, we can do that as well. But if you want it to be a certain width only, we can have that as well with an overflow. And after that, this is something we're not gonna implement in this tutorial. We'll be doing it in a future tutorial where you can actually have our buttons link to React Router and work with React Router as a link tag. Uh, but we'll be working with this when we create an app bar. Next thing is providing custom element with TypeScript, getting the button ref, and just a simple unstyled button. So let's go ahead and actually implement this button into our app and let's work with this. So I went ahead and opened up the 
application that we've been working on from our previous course tutorials. And the first thing that we're going to do is inside of our components folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'll just call it, whoops, I'll call it buttons.tsx. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy what we have inside of our cards file just so we have some some content inside of this file so TypeScript doesn't yell at us. And I'll call the function to be exported to be buttons. We'll get rid of all of this stuff right here. We don't need any of it. We'll get rid of this as well. And we'll get rid of every single thing within our div. And the only thing we're going to put inside of there, we'll just put in hello from button component. And let's go ahead and import that into our app.tsx file right here. We'll put it right above, right underneath our cards. So I'll do buttons from our buttons component. And if I go back into my app, we should see, perfect. So now we've, com we've connected our button component to our main app component. Let's go ahead and import some buttons. All right, so the way that we're gonna import this, it'll be really simple. The button that we're going to be grabbing will be our gradient button right here since it's a variant that we can't actually test in the usage case right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and copy all five of these buttons and I'll put it into my buttons component right here. So I'll replace this with that. And we need to import buttons from our Mantine core. So I'll just do import curly braces button from at mantine slash core and that's all we need to do so if we go back into our app we should see our gradient buttons available to us right there perfect now let's go ahead and mess around with this a little bit all right so the first thing i got to tell you guys is that with the gradient variant you can't have light mode or dark mode enabled themes so it'll always stay as that gradient no matter what with the other variants you do have the ability to have different themes available when you switch between light and dark mode so inside of the variant gradient, we have this gradient property. So it goes from a, a color all the way to a different color. So in this case, we have indigo to cayenne, teal to lime, teal to blue. And then you notice that we have degree 275, degree 60, degree 35. That just means what kind of degree that you want for the gradient. So we can go all the way from zero to 360. So I can choose instead of 60, we can do like something like 90. And if we go into our teal blue, we should see that is exactly 90, like so. It's perfectly even. Let's say if we wanted, we can customize a lime green. Let's say if we wanted 180, now we see that's 180, so it's from bottom to top. Now let's go ahead and import a simple icon. How would that look? Well, since we already have an icon available to us, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So I'll just copy this import from our light dark button component. We'll import it into our button component. And the way that we import this is really simple. We can either do left icon or we can do a right icon. We can't do top or bottom, sadly. Um, but with some styling, of course, you can do it like that. So the tag that the way that we're going to actually import a icon is we need a tag. So sun icon, self closing brace. That's all we need. Now, if we go into my indigo to cayenne, we'll see that we have a sun icon like so. All right, let's talk about loading and how we can work with that. So I'm going to use my other button right here, the lime green button. And all we have to do is we have to implement the prop loading. And we have to set it either to be true or false. So in our case, I'll do true. And if we go back into our app, we should see that it's loading. Now, what if we want to do it on click? That's really simple as well. All we have to do is create a on click function call it handle click and all we have to do is create that function right here so const handle click and we will have to also create a use state variable as well so we'll do const loading and set loading to be use state false and we just call set loading here and loading to be true whoops there we go and all we have to do we just have to implement loading where our true is and now if we save it and we were to click this button it loads all right now if we want to try to redirect somebody all we have to do is component is equal to an a tag and then all we have to do, give it is the href and we'll just redirect it to https colon double slash 
www.google.com. We have to save it. And we go into our app and I click on the teal blue, it'll redirect to there. If you want to have it open in a separate tab, all you have to do is just give it a target is equal to in quotes underscore blank. And that's it. All right, so if you want to apply custom styling, it's really simple. All you have to do is use the styles tag with curly braces. We have to give it a theme, arrow function. Oops. There we go. And inside of here, we can apply all of our custom themes that we want or custom styles that we want. So we, if we want to target the root, all you have to do is root. And then remember that since we are using a gradient variant, we can't give it a background color because it just won't apply. If you were using a variant like filled, outline, that type of stuff, then it would work. Um, but we can do something like border. Whoops. We can give a border to be zero. Height, we can give it like 500 pixels. Padding right, we can give it 69 pixels. If we want to target on hover, that's also really simple. All you have to do is in quotes and colon hover. If we want on hover, let's say we can give it a uh, we can give it a padding left of 100 pixels. And so now if I were to go in the app and we try this out, right now it's at five, that's really, really long, but if I hover over it, we add that hover effect as well. Let's say if we want to change the font styling, sorry, the font family, all we have to do is font family, in quotes, we give it whatever we want, so I'll give it monospace, and then it will apply the monospace as well, like so. All right, so that covers buttons at a high level. Now you should have enough knowledge to use this component in your own apps. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.